thank you so much for joining on that sunshine bright day uh, today on the thursday afternoon into the gulf region we are happy to start our uh, technical sessions uh, which is in line to our brainwise vision about how we can help businesses to grow into overall this mina and then world region as well we have previously talked about multiple things either in terms of e-commerce uh, cloud solutions marketing activities artificial intelligence and many other things today we are coming back with something very new we all know the covid helped us to go digitally out there everyone is now having their online platforms but every uh, digital head every marketing team they have a questions from the management what is next so we are here to help you that answer that okay what is going to be the next uh, today we are going to talk about that okay how you are able to grow your business not 1x 2x but 5x how we are able to achieve it by utilizing data insights and personalizations if you look at the market uh, or we look at the customer sentiments everyone wants that that okay the digital press platforms should understand them like the way we want uh, when you are going into any of the brick and mortar shops there are the sales persons owners and many others are there who comes and greet you they know you or they might be getting you that okay choice that you are looking for and they will direct you to the best locations they will offer you the best products they might you offer you the products which you might don't require as well but you find something good so that's the same experience that customer is looking for into the digital era as well now is this sentiment really uh, true yes because a popular study says that 80% of customers are more likely to purchase from a platforms which provide their personalization experiences on that there is another story that okay 69% of online shoppers they said that quality or the relevance of the company's message that influence their brand advocacy or the perceptions of brand as well so we wanted to make sure that okay how we can have the loyal customers because into the digital age the customer acquisition cost is too high how we make sure that okay whatever investment we are doing we can generate the roi faster roi and uh, continuous roi as well to discuss on this topic we have expert team with us we have mr brinder bamra he is a senior solution consultant from adobe thank you brinder for joining us okay uh, we have mr chintan shah he is a ceo of a brainwire infotech he is a industry veteran working into many years Ah, uh, in Chintan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Maharshi. Good afternoon, everyone. Ah, uh, this is Chintan Shah, and at Brainwire, we focus on uh, digital transformation, helping organization to go digital, and uh, which has been a key aspect in the recent time. Ah, uh, we are in eleven countries with the twenty global offices. Ah, uh, close to fifteen hundred brainers work for uh, organization. Um, we have acquired few companies, so we have grown organic and inorganic. Easyalytics is one of the data analytics company that we acquired and started offering the data analytics solution to all the retailers, which helps companies to do the decision making for the next generation. Or a CRM is a CRM for commerce and Control ERP is a retail omni-channel digital solution for the retailers. So that's a brief about the company. A lot of focus and emphasis is given on AI, ML, blockchain, and IoT, some of the latest and the greatest technology. Middle East has been one of the key focus for us. So we have offices in Dubai, Qatar, Kuwait, and Saudi to cover the entire MENA region. Very strong presence in North America and US and Canada, and Southeast Asia and Singapore and India. And I'm glad to be a part of this webinar and uh, hopefully. to everyone we will be able to give some good insights which can help them to do some deep analysis and thinking and take the journey forward thank you so much chintan for joining us your global presence shows that okay you are right now sitting into san francisco and you know <laughs> like i'm calling from dubai as well and we have a couple of folks from our india and singapore locations uh we have kevin clore he is a cio of a tenten table he is uh, going to help us with the ground realities of the retail business thank you 
uh, Kevin, for joining us. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, having me here. I'm really excited to be part of this wonderful panel, talk about uh, our journey at Tent and Table with, you know, uh, really delivering customers the content that they want to see. I am the chief information officer for a company called Tent and Table. We uh, import and distribute a, um, commercial and residential grade party and event rental equipment. Um, we sell on Adobe Commerce. We sell on eBay. We sell on Amazon. We sell on Walmart. Um, we have a direct sales team. Uh, and we utilize various technologies to bring customers the best possible experience. And like I said, super happy to be here. And I just uh, can't wait to share our journey and get a lot of good feedback from the audience. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, before moving forward, Brinder, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi there, everybody. Apologies for that earlier. I forgot to press the mic button. It happens in a live event. I'm calling from my, uh, from my. I'm joining this webinar today, and I'm excited to be here from my home office. And obviously, the world pandemic is affecting all of us. But one of the key things that I am um, really excited to talk about is to being able to discuss with you guys there. So if you have any questions, you would like further insights, please don't hesitate to add any questions to the, uh, to, to to the webinar there. So again, looking forward to have a quick discussion. Thank you so much, Brenda, for joining us. So today, uh, in our webinar, we are going to talk about first steps of any of the personalization activities, which is data collections. Second, what should be your strategy for the implementations? Third one, if you want to implement this strategy, what kind of a technologies that you need? Fourth one is about what we can learn from other people. There are many companies who has already done, so we will be talking about the case studies of them. So I would like to start uh, things from you, Chintan, because you know, like you've been into this industry since 20 odd years. You've seen lots of retail companies growing, you know, like their growth has become a 2x, 20x as well. Uh, and the data collections and everything, the personalization story. So how that first steps of data collection starts and what they exactly do? Sure, Maharshi. Uh... So personalization is one of the most important aspect in the retail journey forward. But the personalization is all about data, right? First is like, you know, that you need to understand the data collection. And it is very vital to understand that what data points you are tracking, who you are tracking. When you track data, I mean, are you tracking on a real time basis? And how you track? I mean, what are the tools and platform you are using? Because I have seen in this last few years that sometimes you collect a lot of data, but your data is so distorted, you might not able to make the sense out of that. You want to collect the data, you want to put into a tool which can help you to do the data mining, data analysis, and then ultimately taking a right decision based on that. Uh, very important to know, like, you know, the traffic, from which sites the traffic are coming, which channels are performing, on-site interaction from the traffic or the uh, uh, channels from which the traffic is coming, what type of interaction they are doing? Are they clicking on like, you know, certain things which you want them to click and view or they're going into some different direction? So you need to understand those landing pages and your interactions. Email channel, very important. Like, you know, when I'm sending a newsletter and when I'm sending a discount offer or a coupon, which are likelihood chances that people are clicking more and what type of product and what type of the year? Personal data, very important, right? I mean... I don't want, I mean, if I have 10,000 customers or 5,000 user base, I don't want to send them a generalized email. I want to personalize to a user group or to the individual and make sure that they get in the right way. Paid media. I mean, we all, I mean, every retail company spend huge into a paid. It's all about like, you know, optimizing your paid. And that's what like, you know, the, every CEO wants to say that the minimum expense with the maximum ROI. Search, like, you know, very important that, how you are implementing the search and how you are available during the entire Google or the entire web eco journey. And last but not the least is the pricing that you want to keep a really dynamic personalization pricing and you want to make sure that those things are available to the consumer. So I think in this journey of personalization, data collection is very important, meaningful data, storing in a right way and make sure that it has a meaningful impact on that. So I think that's what we will learn in the course of this webinar. Yeah, sure. You talked about so much of data. I never knew the existing of such kind of a data is available out there, which the retail company can utilize. 
Now, you know, like to collect this data, you definitely need a different touch points, which you connected like email, traffic, and many other things. Uh, Kevin, we'd like to know from your end, what is a typical customer journey for any of the retail industry? Because you've been to retail industry since a long, you might be having customers coming from a variety of channels and sources. So we want to understand what is a typical customer journey onto a digital platform? Uh, thanks, Maharshi. Yeah, so here at Tent and Table, uh, one of the things we you know, struggled with as a growing company was really understanding our data and then understanding what to do with the data to properly engage customers. I think, you know, and we think here at Tent and Table, we think of the customer journey as, you know, almost like a, a story. Each customer has their own story, right? And within that story, you have all the elements. Uh, you go searching for them, you know, you, you, and you can only go properly search for customers if you understand the data you're looking at. Then once you find them, the question is, how do they get them to you? How do you get them to you? So at that point, um, you know, you can utilize various technologies and various strategies to get the customers to come to you. You can use things like, you know, email marketing and you can use things like uh, uh, search and um, you can definitely uh, uh, make that journey for the customer much easier um, by uh, offering them landing pages and really, really engaging with the customer. Um, so <clears throat> let me just get back to my slide here. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, one of the things that we really focus on here is providing the customer with a really easy way to find us based on their data. And then once we get them to the site, we really wanna make it easier for easiest for them to find the products that they're looking for and to engage with us, whether it's through an omni-channel customer experience or service chatbots, um, through you know, dynamic pricing that's very personalized to the customer, um, to pre-populated forms. So understanding the data, having the customers be able to find you, having you be able to find the customers, and once they're there, thoroughly engage with them in a personal sense so they want to stay they want to explore and ultimately they want to convert. That's, you know, like two huge success, uh, customer story, you know, like, because when you look at the first point and the last point that you mentioned, so many touch points are there. And as Chintan mentioned, so many data can be collected as well. Uh, now, you know, like we talked about data, we talked about journey as well. Now let's talk about certain real things that everybody of us face. So you being a CIO, you know, like you would be directly facing your marketing team. Your marketing team does have their own their goals, and you help them to succeed that goals. Can you share some more insights? That okay, what are the typical marketing goals for any of the retail company? Yeah. So uh, thank you for that. So the typical marketing goals for any retail company are pretty much the same amongst retail companies. And what it is is understand your data, understand mm -hmm. what customers are actively. Uh, in your ecosystem so that you know how to properly market and keep existing customers. I believe fundamentally that's always first and foremost. Establish the relationship and keep what you have and then grow. So in the growth part, um, one of the things that you want to do is you want to find the best ways to communicate with customers, whether it's email or text messaging. You know, you want to be certainly innovators of how you can reach customers. Um, you want to also improve the experience, constantly being improving experience of the customer as they come to your site and as they engage with you. And whether that's just through technology or through landing pages or through optimizations you've made to your communication structure, it all matters in terms of getting the customers to have an excellent experience when they engage with you. Um, and then the two things I also wanna talk about is, you know, always follow the data, right? There is a certain amount of, I think, gut instinct when it comes to marketing, and that's fine. But you really want to go where the data is telling you to go and maximize the information that you get from your data-driven analytics. And then you're always keeping an eye on margins. You're always wanting to make sure that you're driving for profitable decisions. Your spend has to make sense in terms of your conversion dollars. If it doesn't, you have to reassess and pivot quickly. 
perfect that's you know that the exact the things that marketing team needs and the cio's challenge to achieve as well uh now i will come to chintan as a you know like solution partner or solution providers so this is what any of the cio needs so how you help uh, so many retail cios to achieve this you are right i mean mahashi whether it's a ceo cio or cmo the number one question or number one their requirement is always going to be like you know how you maximize your revenue how you want to reduce the cost and how how you make customer experience amazing so that you can see a lot of reengagement so i mean there are of course i mean many tools are available and adobe is like you know leading that uh, quadrant in the best possible from a ecosystem point of view so maximizing the revenue which is one of the most important thing that data driven content generation as kevin was mentioning like you know understanding the data and based on that you want to have a platform which can help you to generate the content which you can display detailed product targeting right i mean you want to target certain segment of product to certain user group you have a certain age group but again you need to have those user group age group data you need to have that data in a relevant format so that you can use those data and then individual dynamic pricing i mean which is one of the most important aspect right i mean nowadays you don't want to show the same pricing to a different customer group but you want to personalize them and that's where the personalization of feeling comes and you create those offline experience into online digital journey reducing cost right i mean the most important thing that how you do the retargeting and i think kevin mentioned a very valid point right i mean there is a gut feeling from the marketing team and then there is a database based feeling that you need to get and like you know how you make sure that you use those data to reduce your cost and automation of some of your workflows and then the most important comes is the customer experience that how you make sure that the customer journey that the moment they come into the landing page or moment they come from the search how you can give them that experience which helps them to take the decision whether it's a dyna, uh, uh, 24 by 7 like chat support system whether you have a ai chat bot you get into a dynamic landing pages you get into personalized pages so those are the most important goals i think any organization ask for and as the service providers or the digital agencies this is something that we need to focus on like you know how to make sure that use the right tool to maximize the revenue reduce the cost and elevate the customer experience sure that's a perfect solution to the goals that we have uh, placed out now we want to come to a brinder being a consultant the same questions might be come to you from cio solution partners and everyone as well so can you help us more about adobe suite that okay how it can help to achieve these goals absolutely and i think both chitin as well as uh, kevin have, have touched on some very powerful points there i mean adobe is a award winning solution um it's recognized both by gartner as well as forrester in, in and can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you as part of all of these different processes um yes we can engage with the customer maybe we can create um dynamic content powered by segmentation to really entice that customer to to different areas of our site or different as aspects and aspirations maybe we can pre-plan future events at a click of a button leveraging recommendation and search powered by adobe sensei our ai engine but furthermore we spoke about also reducing costs and understanding our data but maybe we want to then look at different customer journey maybe do ab testing or multi variant testing talk about the customer interactions or the targeted groups for automation and then but how do we digest that data and that brings us me on to a last nice little last point so kevin mentioned there yes we can absolutely go ahead and target various different audiences but if it doesn't make cost effective sense then we need to pivot on our point and really start to delve into in, in, maybe into a different direction follow the data as you put it rather than our gut and i think furthermore that is a very good understanding because if we can pull in all forms of data digest that 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 data and have it in a concise visual and customer insight way it really does help us grow that bit, that bit further but what i love most about the adobe's open platform is that it allows us to bring together multiple technologies to ensure that all our business critical systems work well together while also leveraging automatic leveraging powerful open apis and pre-built plugins but also at the same time engaging powerful partner networks such as our good friends here at brainwire so i think over the next couple of slides we'll delve in a little bit deeper around how we can actually do this but as a as a, a sort of holistic overview that's my point of view 
perfect thank you so much so we got the goals we got a solutions and we got a products as well in mind now we wanted to hear from Sintin if any of the retail company wants to adopt this because we talked about goals which is common we talked about data which is common so what is a common strategy that everyone can adopt it goes Maharshi it goes back to the humans right I mean as a human how we started a journey I mean when we were born we start with a crawl we learn a little bit of walking and then we get into a run mode and then ultimately we land into where we are like you know land of moon so it's very important that you start your journey with a crawling a baby steps and that baby steps can be perfectly fit with adobe commerce which helps you to do the standard pilot commerce platform then come into a run which is like you know that okay now you start collecting the data you want to give product recommendation live search and as brinder was mentioning i mean adobe has all the suites available so that like you know start with adobe commerce which gives you enough from the search and the recommendation perspective so that you expand that and get into a walk journey and now once you know your you started crawling you stabilize into walk then ultimately what you want to do is the run and that's where like you know that things comes with adobe commerce adobe target and adobe analytics and sensei platform which ultimately help you to collect the data make the meaningful decision and then based on that show to the customer what they want to see or what you want them to see and and then ultimately move from that and then i mean end goal is definitely going to be like a omni channel type of experience where you are land on moon where the customer come online offline different marketing channels different uh, marketplaces you want to give them the same personalized experience and that's where i think uh, from a Gartner and Forrester, when you look at it, Adobe comes into a top magic quadrant and they come into a number one from a commerce platform point of view uh, or the digital experience point of view. The reason for that is that it's an open source architecture, open APIs, easy to do the scaling and considering like, you know, that BrainWire has a global operation. I mean, we have looked at like, you know, the customer journey and personalization, whether it's in North America and US and Canada or it's in Middle East, which is in Dubai, Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi or you look at it in Southeast Asia and Singapore, Malaysia. Everywhere, customer journey, experience, channels from which customers are coming are different. And the one solution can fit all is Adobe. So that's where I think we are very proud to be associated with Adobe. And the journey that we have seen in last few years that Adobe has taken with Adobe Target, Sensei, Experience Platform and Commerce has been amazing definitely yes you know like adobe is one of the most used the most powerful tool or i would say a platform for any of the retail companies now as chintan has given a strategy that okay what exactly we should do as any of the retail company i would like to come back to kevin and then brinda so kevin would like to hear that okay for each steps what are your expectations means what you need what you want to achieve and then i want to bring the to talk about that okay how it can be achieved by the adobe suite uh yeah sure so um the analogy of uh crawl walk run is is uh really excellent when it comes to uh, providing customer experience with your business um in the crawl phase obviously it's the initial phase where you're understanding your business you're understanding not your business but your data sorry you're understanding your data and it's mm -hmm. your initial, your very uh, young initial attempts to provide content to customers based on the data you have. Um, the, the problem is, you know, like most uh, crawls is, you know, there's accidents. Uh, there's, there's sometimes crawling just for the sake of crawling and not really any direction. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know sometimes you have that little crawler that will try to walk too soon and there's a lot of falling down and getting back up so yeah. the analogy holds here uh you know you're really for the first time trying to understand your data from a segmented standpoint and from that you're trying to deliver initial experiences to customers based on that data and i think the most common way we do it in the crawl phase is at the very base level is offer some sort of pricing differences to customers based on who they are what they're buying where they come from so on and so forth so in the crawl phase it's just a very early understanding of data and trying to serve up some different different content or dynamic content and pricing based on that data 
not too technical, uh, not too uh, uh, sophisticated, but a step or a crawl in the right direction. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I couldn't put it better myself. I think slip ups are inevitable in any business, and the crawl phase is exactly designed for that. Um, and it's a nice, nice analogy there, especially to bring it back to ourselves. And we learn how to walk, and we learn how to crawl, and then, uh, but each step of the way, we're always preparing for the next. And I think this is what's very, very important about this whole approach. So we're at the crawl phase right now. We're, um, I think, uh, I think Kevin said a few moments ago. He said, he said we need to understand the data, but he also preempted that. Just uh, may have heard that so we need to understand our business, and that might be true for some. It might not be so true for others. For others, it might be the case of understanding the data more so than the business. But ultimately, we are actually trying to grow in both avenues. And I think this is very, very prominent when it comes to Adobe Commerce because what what you'll not be able to do right from the get go is have that content targeting and just set up your basic pricing your basic promotions your cross sells and your upsells and just from a very sort of foundational layer and just get the mvp going the the most viable product to your consumer and then then we will not start to plan or pre-plan into the next phase <laughs> which we'll just touch on in a few moments and brenda just uh before we leave sure. this one of the things um as a cio of a young company that's growing uh, that I found at this stage, which was so frustrating, was mm -hmm. it was the first time we actually tried to pull data from various siloed systems, mm -hmm. understand them. And what I find is the data is often dense. Uh, I don't want to say nonsensical, but but it mm -hmm. can make a, hard to make sense of it for a new company. And it's just not visually appealing. So mm -hmm. could you just talk a little bit about how Adobe, because um, I know it's worked for us terrifically, but really how Adobe does a great job of make, ha, allowing you to look at data that makes sense. Not only that, but in a way that's visually appealing so you're happy to work with it. Absolutely. And I, th I think that's a very valid point. If we can have all the data in the world, but if we can't understand what we're looking at or make a tangible use of it, then we then we need to be able to to look at things in a different light. And yeah. Magento Business Intelligence is a great tool to do exactly that. It allows you to to explore further and deeper your commerce data and look into different aspects of exactly what are we doing. The lifetime value, for example, basic metric that you would normally have for most customers. Your returning portfolios, your actual customer active portfolios. Looking at potentially your 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 categorization modeling as well as your product sell volumes. And just typical things such as linking in various analytical tools, which we'll come to again in, the, in some further slides, where we start to get some real-time insights of what customers are actually doing today and how they are really going to progress further. And then we can start to explore the further stages down the line when we talk more about the run stage, and then we'll eventually talk about the, the land of the moon. So that does bring it beautifully together. And thank you for bringing that up, Kevin. Thank you. Perfect. That's a good amount of insights that we got as a first steps that anybody wants to put as a personalization strategy. Now, Kevin, let's move to a second step of walking. Can you share your expectations and then Brinder will put down that how Adobe can solve this? Yeah, and I think um, I think the walk stage is is really for a growing business and especially a business now focusing on personalization is one of the most important stages because it shows that you understand your data and you're ready to kind of take that to the next step and really begin to engage customers or attempt to engage customers on a one-to-one -one basis. And this is really gonna set the foundation for what comes next and run, run and, and going to the moon. So um, what you really want to expect at this stage is that the data is to the point where you can understand the behaviors of your customer. You can understand why they're coming to your site and why they're leaving your site, both equally important. Um, and you have to understand that both are equally important. Um, you also begin, I think, to inject some artificial intelligence into the customer experience, uh, whether that be through um, landing pages based on customer search terms, or even just the AI search that you know Sensei offers in terms of allowing customers to very easily find relevant content on your site by typing in you know uh, phrases or words that make sense to them within your shopping ecosystem. Um, it also really becomes the first time that you're not only focused on searching for customers on your site, you're kind of going off platform now, searching for customers in kind of the great expanse of the digital world. Um, and one of the, you know, one of the best places to do that is social media. 
Uh, the one thing I'll just say about this phase is, you know, it's 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 a lot of data. It's fast. It's exciting. You're introducing your business to new customers, but this is where we go back to the crawl phase, right? Follow the data, understand your customers, because once you start venturing off-site into a world where not everybody is wanting to be around your content, if you don't understand your data and you don't understand the behavior of your customers. When you start going to look for them in places like social media, you will be blocked out and it'll be very hard for you to begin to engage with them. So again, these are these are stages for a reason. One is a, the previous is the foundation to the next and you have to use that information in a way that makes sense and allows you to uh, really um, target customers and find customers and recruit customers based on the behaviors that are relevant to your business. Absolutely. And Kevin, this brings to mind a conversation that you and I had once before, and we were talking about how we need to ensure that we present the right data in front of the customer. And I believe you were speaking about it. I'm probably going to hand back to you in a few minutes just to sort of clarify a little bit further. But uh, how the, uh, potentially some of your client portfolio, if you were to send them the wrong type of product, it, they wouldn't even click on the on the email or the communication and actually land off. You can just explain maybe very quickly, and I'll expand further into technology, what's going on there, about what that was and how you achieved that. Uh, sure. And I think it's a great example of how you transition between the phases too, right? So initially... Uh, you're getting your data, you're coming up with some uh, behavioral marketing campaigns. Um, and our behavior was people engaged with the website. So we would get up, we would uh, create these marketing campaigns kind of based on all of our product offerings and send it to anybody who engaged on the website. Uh, not very sophisticated, but effective in terms of, you know, a broad reach. But we're finding that that plateaued quickly uh, because uh, we have like most companies, uh, different customers. We offer uh, tents, tables, and chairs, and some of our customers really are interested in tents, tables, and chairs. We also offer inflatables, and a different segment of our com uh, company is interested in inflatables. If I'm putting inflatables in front of tent customers, the chances of them clicking and engaging on whatever marketing I'm using is very low. Okay. Uh, but if I can identify who my tent customers are, and I can have really well-crafted dynamic content based on tents put in front of them, the chances of them engaging and ultimately converting is very high. And that shows you the evolution or the sophistication uh, difference between a, a crawl and a walk. Because now what we're doing is not only are we giving segmented customers data that solely interests them, when they then come to the website, they're being greeted by landing pages that also cater not only to what they're directly interested in, but what we feel based on our data, again, follow the data, what also they may be interested in. So it's created a much better, I think, conversion track. Yeah, and ultimately what we're talking about here is creating that fantastic customer journey or experience. Now, I just want to have a quick call out. I have Poonam here as well that's just uh, um, joined the, joined our webinar today. And she, and she answered, uh, uh, he or she, sorry, I do apologize. Of course, we can't tell over here. But um, when we get asked a very, very good question. We've been asked that over the last three years that, that this, this individual has been using the open source. And should they really be looking at target or analytics? And when would be the right point of, of interaction? I think this is a very valuable point. And this is the reason why I asked Kevin to, expo to explore that particular journey. With open source, absolutely, you could potentially utilize these other solutions if you want to. But if you really want to get that rich data that Kevin has just explained right now, well, we're setting up the right segment groups in front of the right customers and then portraying the right data or content delivery around those customer journeys or user experiences, then you probably should really be anticipating or looking further at growing into the Adobe Commerce solution. But that's where we'll be able to capture those multiple touch points. That's where we'll be able to understand better that customer data. And ultimately, that's where we'll be able to utilize better that, those customer insights to drive that change or that customer journey or experience. So thank you, Kevin, for explaining that. Thank you, uh, Bunam, for asking the question. And ultimately, the, the solutions behind this is basically a combination of both. So as we progress down these different journeys, no one journey is a hard and fast. Every business progresses in a different manner. So thank you to all for that particular topic. Yeah. Brindley, then, oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead, Kevin. 
Yeah, no, just real quick on that. Um, while the personalization is also a journey of crawl, walk, and run, so is the backbone or foundation of your whole e-commerce ecosystem. Okay. Um, we had a very similar path to Poonam where we were in uh, Magento open source and moved to Adobe Commerce. And we did it at a time we felt was right for us, really just kind of based on, you know, a lot of, a lot of different factors. But predominantly, we really wanted to, and we'll talk about this in the upcoming stages, as we go to run and land on the moon, we wanted to create that ultimate omni-channel experience and not stop having siloed data or bridge connected data and adobe commerce really offered that in a, in a in a way that was just amazing for our business sure that's you know like that's typically that looks like a, a second set because you talked about so many things and how we can achieve the same as well now as the second step is so exciting we would like to understand the third step as well the run so same way, Kevin, we'd like to hear what exactly comes from you that, okay, in a running way that you need in from your platform, which Brinder can provide a recommendations. Sure. Yeah, so the run phase is really kind of a, a culmination of the crawl and the walk where, you know, now that you've done a really good job identifying your customers, segmenting your customers and marketing to them in a very one-to-one -one basis, now you have to understand in the run phase to really take it to the next level. What does all this mean in terms of dollars? What does all this mean in terms of profit? What are your customers buying from you now? What is hot this time of season or, or this month or this day? Um, and then really now, I think one of the, the next levels is properly categorizing customers that make sense to your business. And to okay. do that, you need to focus on certain data points. It can't always, or I guess it could be, but in my opinion, it shouldn't always just be on gross revenue. There should be other data that other data that you're looking at the customer to determine how to score that customer, or how to kind of rate that customer, or, or in what we call it, how to properly group that customer. Okay. Because ultimately, you want to get to a phase where you can offer really uh, exciting and sophisticated, dynamic content based on customer groupings. And that's how you will really uh, strengthen that hold on existing customers and also be able to go out through a lot of the, the programs and the powers within the Adobe system, recruit new customers and offer them a branded experience as well. So um, it's really about understanding your customers now, being able to group them, being able to understand what they're buying and making sure at this point that your margins are protected and that you have what we call margin integrity with your sales. Absolutely. And Kevin, you really are doing a great job there. And I just want to, again, call out another person. Uh, we have Kashiv here in, in, in the chat asking a further question, which we can actually answer as we progress down. How can how can Adobe Commerce or, or uh, the open source for Magento be able to help in our businesses? And we'll be discussing in, in the next coming slides. But ultimately, what I wanted to say there is that we're now beginning to go into our uh, our walk and run phase and no two businesses are different i think this is a very valid point i think we need to, to make that very very clear the beauty of the solution is that not only can we clearly define our goals but we can evolve through the digital maturity and other steps we can take the different different ultimate steps to get to our end goal i think at a high level insight will not happen overnight i think that's something that we all must be aware of but as we start to grow and we start to progress we start to understand or even educate ourselves how to align better with our customers and the expectations that they have on us for their tailored journeys i think this is something that we need to understand very very clearly because we take a step back here and we look at the walk again but walk is never really just walk because we're then progressing into it, it sorry no the slide that we were on was was fine there sorry apologies so if we go back to the slide where we have the walk and the run that'd be great thank you so if we take a step if we look at this here we're taking a step back yes we see walk and we see run but what's great here is that we're actually preparing for the run phase as kevin said as well as chitan said as well so when it's never just a clear cut phase we're always progressing or looking to the next element of our, of our career. And the way that Adobe Commerce, as well as uh, uh, some of the other solutions can help is that we, we out of the box, uh, Adobe Commerce does offer a lot of powered AI Sensei delivered solutions, such as product recommendations, as well as search. But 
though those are our foundational layers and we were able to create those foundational sort of segments or our foundational merchandising to the end customer but if we want to then start to explore further we want to get that one-to-one -one personalization we're going to then start looking at uh, a b testing we're starting to look at multivariant testing dynamic merchandising and ai powered recommendations at a deeper level utilizing something like adobe target to get us closer to that one-to-one -one. Um, so if next slide, please. So then if we then look at um, as, as part of this customer journey, we have the unknown profile that our gentleman here on the left in almost in the gray. But we we're, we're going towards that known profile, that gentleman there on the right in full color. And this is not going to happen overnight. Right. So we're, we're going to want to understand as part of as part of this sort of journey. Well, you know, what does what common data does M MBI provide us? What sort of transactional swift business decisions can we make based on cross sell, upsell, margin, revenue and more? But naturally, this will become there will become a moment where we begin to explore. Well, how do we do add behavior reporting into this? How do we segment that behavior reporting and data to a fully targeted across multiple different touch points? I think Kevin mentioned this as well. We know he doesn't have two different types of customers, but they're interacting at multiple different touch points. So we need to understand and digest as well as align ourselves to those multiple touch points. And then we can then further talk about launch, so some of the launch connectors that we have here internally within Adobe. Mm -hmm. That then this is fantastic because what this allows us to do is utilize recommended taxonomy for synchronized events, both in target as well as analytics to provide that continued growth and understanding of these customer profiles. I think that is the most powerful thing here. Next slide, please. Next slide, please, Marish. Thank you. Now, the ultimate goal, of course, is land on the moon. And this is where we all aspire to be. Um, and again, no one is there 100%. So please do not worry. If you're one of these people that are, are wondering, well, oh, well how, do I, how do I bring all these things together? How do I make these multi-different, varied facets all communicate in a nice, lovely manner? We're all the same. You're not alone. Everyone thinks in exactly the same manner. I'm sure to this day, Kevin, would you agree that there's still areas that you're that you would want to explore further? Constantly. And, and, you know, you're always wanting to do better and you're always wanting to get more out of your data. And to me, land on the moon is creating that perfect ecosystem of commerce within your business, which mm -hmm. you never achieve fully, but you're always striving for. Absolutely. And because of this open, uh, this open framework that we have and the multiple connection types, we, we can progress into these at an evolutional stage, a phased approach. So maybe we want to, I don't know, maybe we want to look at Adobe Experience Manager there in the red there on the left for powerful headless content management and, and build out solution sites based on customer demographics and expand into a, a tools of workflow process, localization capabilities and immersive experiences across customer journeys and a full commerce catalog um, that is embedded within AEM for a full headless approach. Or we may want to discuss um, Adobe Analytics with our customer, with our customer, based on our customer, sorry, where we can better track their behavior, gather that data and customer segmentation, and then start to target various different touch points as part of that journey with beautiful visualizations and deeper insights. But maybe we want to drive personalization one-to-one -one, as we discussed in the <coughs> slides where we're using adobe target for a b testing multivariant testing ai driven personalization which is more relevant to the consumer that is in in front of us today and ultimately maybe down the line where we're looking at now maybe marketo engage where now that we've retained that customer, we've built that loyalty that following that social presence and other different multiple areas of touch points Maybe we now want to engage with the customer to cultivate their interest, you know, drive their journeys, maybe have multiple touch points to returning or, or, or a future goals or future segments or different areas of interest. That's where we start to cultivate these journeys with Market to Engage. With such a rich set of capabilities and solutions that power a wide array of businesses, retailers, manufacturers, distributors, governmental services across industry and geographics, we really do believe Adobe, as well as our, our amazing partner network such as Brain right here can really help you get to the next step. And I really hope Poonam as well as Kashif that answers your question. Sure. Thank you so much. It was such a great insights about the Adobe products and how any of the retail company can land on the moon out there. Now to talk about strategy, the implementation ways and everything. So we would like to know 
what kind of a tools technologies can help you to achieve this strategy because as kevin was mentioning he mentioned about the different expectations now into each each of the expectations as well we want to dive deeper what exactly they need and then we want chintan to speak about that okay what kind of a tools are already available by which we can we should not do reinvent the wheel and achieve the outcomes that we need yes kevin would like to hear from you uh yeah no th- uh, thank you for that maharshi i mean i i think uh you know everybody realizes uh what tools i think are out there and and you understand that you know there's there's personalization platforms and emailing and traffic um from a cio perspective um you're you're never you're always inundated with a tremendous amount of technological options to improve your e-commerce ecosystem the question really becomes as you go through the different phases um how much of those in my opinion can you uh bring in to be natively part of your um e-commerce backbone right i don't like bridges bridges break um i like to have things be handled natively <laughs> i'd like to take everything here or as much as here that is here on the architecture and be able to do it um without having to rely on apis or other systems uh for the sole purpose of i needed to work i needed to work effectively and if something doesn't work i want one group i can go to to fix it that is really my concern concern as a cio i want to get away from silo data i want to go and get away from bridge data and i want to be really doing as much as i can within uh the platform that i choose and that's where adobe commerce really to me sets itself apart from all other options out there uh when we moved from um magento to adobe commerce uh i was literally able to shed approximately 85% of our third party relationships that's 85% in cost that's uh 85% of my data that's no longer bridged that means faster more reliable more relevant information and data results as well as faster more reliable um uh, more engaging customer experience on the front end. So when it comes to architecture, my advice to you, try to get it in a true omni-channel experience. Adobe Commerce is second to none with that. And on top of that, you really do need an excellent um development partner, a partner that really knows what they're doing inside of Adobe Commerce or Magento, uh, a a partner that has a 360 degree view of your business and understands what your needs are and I'm happy to say uh Brainvire who's also on this call uh, uh Chinton's company again they're second to none at providing those solutions and working within the Adobe Commerce ecosystem to generate fantastic results for Tenton Table and I appreciate all of you Thank you Kevin and uh, we appreciate you definitely and uh, we appreciate Adobe as well i mean uh, retail journey has been so much of demanding the way in which this digitalization is going on the demand from the customers are very high in terms of their expectation that they want to have dynamic landing pages they want to have pricing they want to get into like you know product recommendation they want to have a better search and they want to analyze the traffic so when you look at all of those things and like you know you want to make sure that you use the platform which is scalable flexible and minimum number of bridges as kevin mentioned and which is the right th- thought process right i mean the more system that you merge as the more problem comes more bridges get break more sleepless night during the i mean black friday and cyber monday so you need to be very careful about it right i mean that's where i think adobe scores in a bigger way so whether we talk about like you know checkout whether we talk about like you know that on site product recommendation whether we talk about personalization whether we talk about traffic analyzing and then putting the landing pages according to that so adobe with the commerce and target and sensei come up with more or less the tools which can be best suitable and it can be best available now of course there are many third parties available so choices are many so first thing is that they are not host put you in a hostile mode that you have to use this however they say that we are open architecture here are the list of partners and here are out of the box skills which are available from adobe and now you ultimately make a decision which is best for you 
however they recommend in their way but i mean that's what i will say that like you know that's where the adobe scores against any other product when you look at it i mean as the digital consulting company we definitely come across many time different platform whether we talk about hybrids of the world or uh, salesforce commerce or we talk about shopify i mean there is always the comparison which happens but then when you compare those things and when you look at this entire product solution it scores in a bigger way i mean that's where i know that beauty of uh, this adobe comes that it's a very scalable and good architecture platform with open source plus it gives you open apis it gives you list of partners and list of apps which are available if you want to use it and if not then adobe has native most of the features which are available to do the user data personalization data storage and making a meaningful decision out of that so i would like to take couple of case studies i mean just to give you example on that uh we have one of our customers uh based out of uh uae region i mean grandios i mean they are the number one or i will say number two in the supermarket space in uh, uae region they're like you know entire platform has been done on adobe commerce and with the pwa and the mobile app all the beauty of the features can be possible to be used uh it's a grocery and the day-to-day -day shopping uh, platform most of the time typically i mean you will have 20 to 30 items in your basket whenever you make a purchase now 20 items if customer has to put one by one by searching it's not a good experience and that's where the data personalization and the recommendation which is the most important that if i have made a purchase for the fruits or certain type of vegetables or certain type of grains or pulses this week it means that maybe for next two weeks it might not be needed or maybe this is like a weekly consumable item so this is where like you know the power of uh, commerce platform has been amazing their growth story has been amazing as like you know like tendon table amazing uh, growth that they have seen after implementing some of this personalization tools uh, in terms of user engagement user reordering and ordering i mean most important is to increase their basket size or the cart size mbt shoes i mean uh, they are a global company out of Singapore uh, with uh, 18 countries operation, large in Europe and North America. Uh, they are into sneaker and lifestyle sports good business. Uh, they have a very different model. I mean, certain countries, they operate in a B2B. In certain countries, they operate in a B2C. And very important to know that the data is very different that you need to track and analyze for a B2B than a B2C. And that's where, like, you know, the tools like Adobe is easily able to do that. So one thing that we did is the open, uh, we have done a single architecture. So we've done a multi-site architecture using Adobe Commerce so that you have multiple websites running on a single platform so that the manageability become easy. And then we have used all those personalized tools from Adobe to make sure that you track the different type of data for B2B and a B2C. So MBT Shoes is in, like, you know, 18 countries and we implemented different websites for those 18 countries running on a single adobe commerce platform and then collection 80 which is like you know based out of qatar uh, again a region where they wanted to become create at sea within the qatar region and that's where the adobe commerce helped them with the entire marketplace platform so again like you know that adobe also gave you a platform where you easily you can do a marketplace implementation along with the mobile app which is very important from a personalization point of view that I want to have my sellers to use the mobile app to know which type of orders they are getting, what type of pricing they have, what type of pricing their competitor has and how they can change it on a very quickly and dynamic basis. So this is where like, you know, this has been fairly successful. So I must say that like, you know, data personalization and uh, personalized journey for the consumers has been amazing using Adobe. We have seen that with Tenten Table. I mean, Kevin was very generous to share a lot of insights about his company and how they, they made the journey from the community edition to the enterprise edition, what was the advantage of it and why they moved into it. Brinder, of course, like, you know, speaking from the horse's mouth, you can understand that, like, you know, why this platform is like, you know, making sense in terms of this next generation and how Adobe, I mean, any customer or the retailers can map their journey start with the crawl, baby steps, see the success, get into the walk, that get into the run and then ultimately land into land of moon. So that's like, you know, I will say that like, you know, that this are some of the case studies. Of course, we have some amazing amount of case studies which are available due to constraint of time. I've just wanted to cover a couple of them. 
but yes most of the case studies are available on our website and definitely on the adobe commerce as well sure thank you it was a quite insightful the real cases that you mentioned and you know i definitely going to help our team and means our attendees out there to achieve what they are looking out there now i'll be opening this platform for the questions we'd like to hear from our audience if they have any questions we already have a couple of them uh, it's first is from archita uh, she's talking about how the packages of adobe work if i go for adobe commerce will the adobe analytics will come along with that or you know, like all the different products uh, everything packaging and everything comes as stand alone so brinder we would like to answer this Sure, absolutely, and I think both uh, Achita's question as well as I think Bradley's just joined as well is is very similar in in, in the respect. So what I'm going to say there is very simple. So the, the Adobe Commerce solution would be almost your foundational layer, and thereafter all the subsequent um, solutions that we spoke of today are all almost like the extensions that you're utilizing today as part of your let's say a Magento solution that you may have or your Adobe Commerce that you may have already. When you're ready, when you're looking to expand into that phased approach, you can then add on those solutions, just as if you were to utilize some of the other partners that were mentioned today that are not Adobe branded. The yeah. difference here is that Adobe will offer you enterprise grade solutions at SMB level or smaller, or if you're SMB growing into enterprise, then that's fantastic as well. We take all the learnings of the big gigantic organizations such as Al Shire Group is one of the companies that we work with today with multiple brands across the globe with hundreds of different store variations and all that knowledge and insight and that future uh, uh, innovation can then trickle down as part of our core solutions. So when would be the right time and does it come as standard? No, not all the packages or solutions come as standard, but what can they do for you? Well, that, that depends on where you are in your digital maturity today, but most definitely give you enterprise grade level of access and data insights uh, accessible at an SMB level. Sure, definitely is. And that's, uh, that helps the, lots of retail companies to choose for as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question is from Akesha, where we talk about that a progressive web application. Is that something which is important in the future that Adobe Commerce or BrainMap works? Kevin, you would like to answer this? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, I think progressive web apps was one of the most attractive offerings from Adobe Commerce that really uh, persuaded us to uh, go all in on the Adobe Commerce ecosystem. Um, I think progressive web apps is hugely important to the future of e-commerce, especially at a retail level. It allows you to provide that lightning fast, stable uh, customer experience um, online or offline. Um, and it also allows you, you know, to create amazing content on demand to the customer as they're, you know, using, uh, your website or as they're they're engaging with you um, I, I recommend anybody here learn more about progressive web apps you will quickly see the value of it to any um, to any company especially in the retail industry sure got it thank you uh, I'll take the one last question as we are coming to out of time uh, it's a question from Robert operating multiple coffee cafe chains across the country to retain the customer, which Adobe tool can help us and how? So, Absolutely. Brinder, can you help us? And sure, I'll happily, okay. happily do that. So, as part of this discussion today, we spoke about a lot of different solutions. Now, initially, you could potentially just use the Adobe Commerce solution, have some some segmentation set up, understand what customer buys what particular coffee at potentially what time of day, and have that sort of data reporting back to you, allowing you to have dynamic content, maybe even make some really insightful recommendations of what type of uh, products could, could accompany the, their favorite uh, beverage. But in addition to that, if we really want to get into one-to-one -one personalization, then we can then really start to look at Adobe Target. Hey, not only are they looking at, let's say, this latte or this coffee or this mocha, but they then have this, they have whipped cream, they have chocolate sprinkles, maybe they have a tall or a venti or, a, or different variations of that of that particular product. So you can really start to get really, really insightful into what does the customer really need or what does the customer really want? And then maybe 
almost in a, as a gut feeling, I think Kevin spoke of this earlier as well, almost predict or have a h- hypothesis of where we think the customer may want to see or want, want to do thereafter. I think as a summary of everything we discussed today, if you've ever wanted to provide dynamic content, recognize customer behavior, respond to that customer behavior, show targeted journeys and influence future purchases as well as retaining loyalty and growth and innovation, then I think what we've discussed today and the different brands and solutions that we have to offer can definitely give you a helping hand in that part. And Robert, yeah, Robert, uh, the biggest thing I think, or not the biggest thing, but one of the biggest values of Adobe Commerce for your situation is going to be the ability to look at uh, excellent data, create uh, a multitude of customer groups based on geographical location and preference, market to them directly, and give them both rewards and uh, you know uh, offerings based on that customer group, so that um, you know they're just having that personal engaged experience every time they come into your one of your coffee shops, regardless of where it is. So that's that's another thing that I would look into with Adobe Commerce, yeah. use of customer groups. And if I may, Kevin, let me add to that. I would strongly recommend um, building a form of loyalty as well. Yeah, a loyalty scheme. If you could do that, mm-hmm. then not only will you be able to do exactly the targeted groups that, that Kevin spoke of, but you could actually um, try and retain those customers or even from, um, allow them to, to utilize loyalty points towards discounts or, or uh, association or increased AOV. So I think there's a lot you can do there and, and all of it is actually out the box, to be honest. Sure, definitely. You know, like that's quite insightful, Brenda and Kevin. Thank you for sharing such amazing in, insights, even in the questions as well. Uh, We'll take uh, Bradley, Architas, and Kathy's uh, questions uh, offline basis from here because we don't want everyone's time. Uh, so I would first like to thank you uh, to all the attendees for coming over here and attend this. And I hope we got we are able to uh, uh, give you the good insights that you are looking at. And a big thank you to Kevin, Brinder, and Chintan as well uh, for sharing their insights. I know it's odd timings, but still you made up for us. So thank you so much for joining in and have us uh, provide such a great insights. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for thank having Thank you, me. everyone. Have a happy holidays and happy new year in advance, everyone, entire audience. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Brinder. Thanks, Mahar. Take care. Bye-bye. Anytime. Bye. Okay, thank you. Thank Bye. you all. Have a happy holidays. Have a great day. Bye-bye.